Every now and then, your Windows will show you system settings change, your hardware settings have changed, please reboot your computer for these changes to take effect. Double exclamation mark. And then the OK button. Even though this looks like a Windows error, it doesn't have anything to do with Windows and those double exclamation marks kinda give it away. If you use Process Hacker to actually see which application generates this window, you will understand why you are having this error. And the answer is very simple. Instead of purchasing a real GPU like Nvidia, you installed basically a placeholder, a plug into the GPU slot, which is any card from AMD, which is essentially garbage. And this hardware garbage also comes with software garbage, which are AMD drivers, which they never could make in their entire lifespan as a company since the days of ATI, before it was purchased by AMD to manufacture GPUs. Anyway, the piece of sh uh, software which generates those errors is AMD External Events Utility. It's a system service, and to get rid of those errors, you have to disable this service. Disabling Windows services is out of scope of this tutorial video. I consider disabling services basic computer knowledge, so educate yourself. But in a nutshell, there are at least four ways you can do that, the most common being using Windows Services applet or System Configuration applet or Startup Settings inside Task Manager where you can disable this service. As soon as you do that, you will never see this pop-up message ever again. Question is, will you lose any functionality without this service? Well, there is very little information what this AMD garbage actually does, but it seems to be responsible for hotkeys, so your hotkeys related to AMD software, like starting screen recording or whatever, won't be working, I'm not sure about that. And it also seemed to be responsible for free sync game detection. So if you are using variable refresh rate in your game to sync it with your variable refresh rate monitor, so you need to have specific hardware for that, this will not work. However, it seems not to be required for free sync anymore. Even with this service disabled, the dynamic refresh rate works regardless. However, disabling this service fixes freezes, blank screens, and even blue screens of devs in certain games, especially on laptops. So this software is not only useless garbage, it is also causing serious problems. So your best option is actually to disable it. Also, there is a very similar error, however it appears during the boot sequence of your computer, especially a laptop, and the text is somewhere similar, configuration changed, restart the system, trouble is it will go in a loop, even if you do restart the system. This is another useless feature, however not from AMD, but from Intel for a change. And it usually happens on ThinkPad laptops, which are also garbage, because if you follow my channel, whenever there is a problem with a laptop, it's either a Lenovo or a NUS. Anyway, this usually appears when you try to connect an external drive, like a USB thumb drive, a USB hard drive, or a USB SSD, and in certain cases, it also may appear when you're using internal drive. So what you need to do is to enter BIOS of the laptop and either disable SGX, which is Intel Software Guard Extensions, or enable it. That depends on what the state of it was before this error started to appear. Question is, how do you enter BIOS? Again, entering BIOS is considered basic computer literacy and it is out of scope for this video. Especially given there are several ways to do that and even different ways to enter BIOS among Lenovo laptops, let alone other brands. Some of Lenovo laptops, for example, have a dedicated button to enter BIOS, but most require pressing an F key. And since you cannot boot into Windows and enter UEFI settings from there, you have to use one of those F keys. It is usually written on the screen before the computer boots which F key you need to press. Just remember, if your F keys on the keyboard act as media keys, 
controlling volume, media playback, brightness and all those things, you may need to also press and hold a fan button before pressing an F button. Or just connect an external USB keyboard entirely for the purpose of entering BIOS and changing that setting. In some cases you will need to remove that external drive that is causing the problems and in certain cases you will also need to disconnect the internal drive just for the BIOS to show you the boot menu where you can select change BIOS settings to enter the BIOS. So this is how you fix both of those errors and hopefully I burned the behinds of both opposing fanboy teams. I am the god of YouTube! Like, subscribe, jingle bells.